Now, in order to explain the next command, which is the face meshing, we need to create a simpler geometry. Therefore, we close the ANSYS meshing software to open the design molder. Now, in order to draw the new geometries, we delete the previous bodies here. Now, because we are going to explain and practice the face meshing command, it is enough to draw some basic surfaces. Therefore, we click on the XY plane and click on the new sketch button so that we can draw different surfaces using the sketching commands. Now, the first shape that we are going to draw is a simple rectangle. After drawing the rectangle, we'll click on the polygon command so that we can create and draw a polygon with six sides. The number of sides can be entered in front of the N as you can see here. Now for the next two shapes, we are going to use the polyline command so that we can create arbitrary shapes. It only should be mentioned that when you're drawing a shape using the polyline command, in order to close your shape and I'll connect the last point to the first point, uh, after drawing the last side, click on the first point and then right click on the same point and click on closed end as you can see here. As you can see here, we drew an arbitrary shape with five sides. Now for the last shape that we are going to draw, uh, we're going to use the polyline to create a more complex shape having more sides, again using the polyline command. Next, in order to turn these shapes and outlines into surfaces that we can apply face meshing on them, we need to create these outlines into surfaces. Therefore, we go over concept and then select surface from edges. After selecting the sketches from surfaces command on the lower left side of the software window in front of the base object, make sure that you've selected the sketch in which you've drawn the arbitrary shapes and then click on apply in front of it and then simply click on generate so that these outlines could be turned into surfaces. Now that we have the needed sketches, we close the design motor software. As you can see here and probably remember, the software is asking us whether we want to load the new geometry for the new meshing session. Just like what we normally do when we open the meshing software for the first time, uh, we click on the mesh without any changes and then click on the generate button so that we can have an initial mesh over our geometries and then you can see the changes when we make them after we apply some commands and local settings. Now as you can see here, the initial mesh has been generated over our surfaces. Also you can see that over the rectangle shape we have a structured mesh due to its nature while over the three other surfaces an unstructured mesh has been created. However, to show you all the capabilities of the face meshing command, we are going to apply it over all of our four surfaces, even over the rectangle having a structured mesh by default. After enabling and selecting the face meshing command, uh, on the low left side of the software window in front of the geometry, you can see that the software will ask us for a geometry. Uh, we simply click on the surface selecting command and then click on the surface of our rectangle. Now about the options shown here, uh, in front of the map mesh you can see by default the yes option has been selected because uh, we want to apply and generate mapped or structured mesh over its geometry. Also in front of the method if you click on it you can select between quadrilaterals and another option. Now as was mentioned in front of the method you can see two options and select between quadrilaterals and triangles best to split. Uh, the quadrilaterals option which its name is obvious creates quad mesh cells over your geometry while triangles best to split option will divide these quad cells into two tetrahedral mesh cells. Now here we select the quadrilaterals option in front of the method because we want to have a structured mesh created over our geometry and then we click on generate button. 
As you can see here, not much changes has been applied over the rectangle shape because we had a structured mesh created over it, even in the initial mesh. We again click and select a face meshing command uh, for the second shape, of course, which is a polygon with six sides. And just like the previous steps that we did for the rectangle, we click on the polygon surface and then click on apply in front of the geometry. But this time, in opposite of the rectangle shape, we need to make some changes under the advanced section so that we can have a structured mesh created over our polygon. Starting with the specified ends, in order to create mapped or structured mesh over any type of geometry, we need to at least have four ending points for that geometry. For example, you can see that for the specified ends over the polygon with six sides, we are going to select the vertices shown here and in the next slides. And next, for the specified sides, we will select the two left vertices over the polygon. After selecting the needed vertices for both specified ends and specified sides, we click on generate button. Now as you can see here, we have created a structured mesh over the six-sided polygon which wasn't possible without defining the specified ends and specified sides options. For the next step, again we right-click on the mesh, go over insert and then select face meshing to create a structured mesh over the next shape. Again, just like what we said in the previous slides, we have to select four ending points in front of the specified ends. And then in front of the specified sides, we are going to select one left point over our geometry. Now in order to explain what we've done so far by selecting some points as a specified ends and some other points as a specified sides, let's say we are going to explain them over the six-sided polygon. As you can probably remember, we selected uh, four vertices over both sides of this polygon as the specified endpoints, and we selected uh, two upper and lower points of the polygon as our specified sides points. Now as you can see here, when we select any point as the specified ends, we are actually telling the software that we want two mesh lines to be exiting from that point, as you can see here. While when we select an, a point as a specified side, we're telling the software that we want three mesh lines to be exiting from that point, as you can see uh, here over the upper and the lower point of the six-sided polygon. That we have three lines, while we have two mesh lines over the specified endpoints. And for the final step, we are going to explain how we can create a structured mesh over the last geometry, which is pretty much complex and have a lot of sides. Now, as you all probably remember, we first have to select the surface of our geometry and then click on apply in front of the geometry. Now, for this geometry, in opposite to the two previous geometries, we are going to use a specified corners option as well. Now, unlike a specified ends and a specified sides, when you assign a point as the specified corner, you're actually telling the software that you want four mesh line to be exiting from that point. For example, you can see that we've selected the shown point as our specified corner and then we click on apply. It only should be mentioned that when you select, for example, uh, one point as a specified corner, you have to select five points as specified ends or another example would be for example when you select two points as a specified corner you have to select six points as a specified ends therefore the law here would be n plus four and being the number of points you select as a specified corners 
Now as was mentioned in the previous slides, we are going to have to select 5 points as our specified endpoints, which is shown in this slide and the next slides. Now the two other left points uh, shown in the upper section of our geometry would be selected as specified sites. Now as you can see here, by defining a specified corner points over the selected geometry, the software has automatically divided our surface into multiple subsections to create a structured mesh over it.